the Battle of Mariana was a small but significant engagement on September 27, 1864, in the panhandle of Florida during the American Civil War. The Union destruction against Confederates and militia defending the town of Mariana was the culmination of a substantial Federal cavalry raid into northwestern Florida. Ultimately the Union retreated back to Fort Barrancash. Background Mariana, the home of Florida's ardent secessionist Civil War governor, John Milton, was an important supply depot and recruiting, mustering center for Confederate militia and reserves. By late 1864, it was the largest northwest Florida town besides Tallahassee still in Confederate hands. A July 1864 raid from St. Andrews revealed the region's potential vulnerability to a larger expedition. On September 18, 1864, a mounted column of 700 Union troops under Brig. Gen. Alexander as both set out from Fort Barrancash near the federal-occupied city of Pensacola and rode eastward on a raid through northwest Florida. The thinly spread local Florida cavalry was unable to provide adequate warning of the size, location, and approach of the raiders. This left regional Confederate commander Col. Alexander B. Montgomery guessing as to the Federal objective and strength, leading to critical delays in calling up reserves and telegraphing for assistance in containing the raiders. As the raid progressed, the Union cavalry fanned out, destroying or confiscating local foodstuffs and supplies. The Federal troopers captured or scattered a small, mixed company of militia, volunteer Confederate cavalry at Ukiana on September 23. To disguise his intentions, as both had a detachment destroy Douglas a ferry on the Choctaw Hatchie River, closing passage along the direct road to Mariana. He then proceeded along an alternate route that would take his expedition northwest of Mariana. On September 26, 1864, his mounted troopers skirmished with Captain Alexander Godwin's cavalry around Campbellton, only a few miles from Mariana. General Asboth rested his weary men in preparation for a fight at Mariana the next day. Still Colonel Montgomery delayed coalescing his forces and calling out the Mariana Home Guard. Campbellton was a crossroads, so the Federals could still move into Georgia or Alabama, or into the richest agricultural region in northwest Florida or back southeast toward Mariana. In attempting to picket all these directions with a small force, Montgomery would be unable to draw his meager reserves together in strong defense of any of them. The battle. On the morning of September 27, the Federal riders proceeded toward Mariana. When they passed the old Fort Crossroads, Montgomery finally could be certain of their destination. He called out the Home Guard and assembled what reserves were already on hand. Montgomery's cavalry contested the crossing of Hopkins a branch three miles from Mariana with the intention of falling back into town via an old bypass rather than the main road. In Mariana, Montgomery deployed the conscripts, militia and home guard in ambush along the main road. As his skirmishers at Hopkins a branch withdrew along the bypass, the home guard waited behind fences and a crude barricade of wagons and carts. Saint Luke's Episcopal Church was a few feet away and would play a pivotal role later. Here the plans of both sides ran afoul of one another, as both divided his force and led the main contingent on a headlong charge down the main road. Meanwhile, he sent another portion of his force around the bypass along the route Montgomery's cavalry had taken. Seeing this and realizing his whole force could be trapped, Montgomery attempted to pull out, but it was too late. The home guard and militia at the barricades would not budge. Unaware of what awaited him, as both swing of the attack rounded the corner straight into a scorching volley by the waiting home guard, as both was wounded in the face and he lost many other senior officers in this volley. Despite being stunned, the Union cavalry rapidly overwhelmed the Confederate cavalry and pushed down the road in pursuit as the flanking force swept in from behind. Many of the rebel troopers were able to push their way past the Union flanking force and escape, but many home guards, conscripts, 
and militia were pinned in town. Colonel Montgomery was captured while attempting to flee to the Chippewa River Bridge. His escaping cavalry took her positions on the other shore and were able to deter the Union forces from crossing the bridge. In town, the remaining defenders on the south side of the street broke and ran, but those near the church stubbornly held out as the detachment of U.S. Colored troops engaged them. A dismounted bayonet charge finally forced their surrender. However, several Confederates continued to fire from the church and nearby homes. This led to the church being set ablaze and the defenders shot down as they were smoked out. Casualties When the fighting ended, some 10 Confederates lay dead or dying, 16 were wounded, 54 were captured and 13 of these were released. Among the wounded was dentist Thaddeus Hentz, a son of famed novelist Caroline Lee Hentz. He was shot not far from his mother's grave. Union casualties were eight killed or mortally wounded, 19 wounded, and 10 captured. Among the federal wounded was General Asboth himself. Prior to the war, Asboth had been a hero of the Hungarian Revolution of 1848 and was one of the men who had surveyed Central Park in New York City. His wound would never heal properly, and he would eventually die of its effects in 1868. Confederate. Killed. Brett James H. Norwood's company. Died of bullet wounds. Carter. John C. Norwood's company. Killed outright. Dixon. Marmaduke. Senior. Norwood's company. Died of bullet wounds. Nichols. Woodbury. Woody. Norwood's company. Killed outright. Lewis, Arthur, Sr., Norwood's Company, died of bullet wounds. Bassett, Henry O., Norwood's Company, killed outright. Sullivan, Solomon, Norwood's Company, died of bullet wounds. Allen, Francis, Frank, Robinson's Club Cavalry, killed outright. Butler, M.A., Robinson's Club Cavalry, killed outright. Brogdon, Z.T., Robinson's Club Cavalry, died of wounds. Myrick, Littleton, Company B, 15th Confederate Cavalry, killed outright. Total killed, 11 wounded. Blunt, AF, Norwood's Company, severe shoulder wound. Davis, John Sr., Norwood's Company, compound fracture of the thigh. Hence, Thaddeus W., Norwood's Company, finger shot off. Chasen, John, Norwood's Company, neck wound. McNeely, Adam, Norwood's Company, shot through lung and blow to the head. Lawrence, Richard C. B., Norwood's Company, gunshot wound to the thigh. Gwyn, Peyton, Norwood's Company, severe blow to the head. Boltzell, Thomas, Norwood's Company, finger wound. Matthews, William, Godwin's Cavalry, minor wounds. Bosworth, Samuel, Godwin's Cavalry, severe arm wound. King, Isaac, Godwin's Cavalry, Gunshot Wound, Dixon, John J., Robinson's Club Cavalry, Blow to the Head, Sheets, C.N., Chisholm's Company, Unspecified Wounds, Shiver, W.N.W., Poe's Company, Minor Side Wound, McPherson, William, Company G., 5th Florida Cavalry, Severe Side Wound, These men were also taken prisoner by the Federals. Total wounded. 15 Federal. Killed. Young. Marlon M. 7th Vermont Veteran Volunteers. Killed outright. Air. Ellis. 2nd Main Cavalry. Killed outright. Campbell. Silas. 2nd Main Cavalry. Killed outright. Davis. Thomas A. 2nd Main Cavalry. Killed outright. Adams. Isaac. 2nd Main Cavalry. Died of wounds. Bracket, blank, 2nd Main Cavalry, died of wounds, total killed, 6 wounded, as both Alexander, commanding officer, Cutler, Nathan, 2nd Main Cavalry, Moody, William, 2nd Main Cavalry, Stanley, Gustavus, 2nd Main Cavalry, Hutchinson, Eben, 2nd Main Cavalry, Rowley, Lyman, 1st Florida U.S., Cavalry, Clark, Alicia, 2nd Main Cavalry, Evans, Joseph, 2nd Main Cavalry, Clough, Charles, Jr., 2nd Main Cavalry, Pollard, Luther, 2nd Main Cavalry, 
Whitney, David, 2nd Main Cavalry, Unknown, 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 2nd Main Cavalry, Total Wounded, 17 Aftermath. Due to the fiercer than expected fighting and high casualties, particularly among the officers, as both planned to turn south toward Street, Andrews Bay was cancelled. Instead, that evening and the next morning, the raiders withdrew toward Choctawhatchee Bay. The column brought with it over 600 liberated slaves, 17 wagons filled with captured arms and stores, 200 captured horses and 400 head of cattle. At Vernon, the force overran Captain W.B. Jones Scout Company, taking more prisoners. In all, 96 prisoners from the various engagements would return with the raiders. The Confederate forces were too few and too far behind to mount an effective pursuit. It would be decades before the region recovered from the damage inflicted by the raid. Forces engaged. The troops involved in the battle were Confederate. Chisholm's Cavalry Company, Alabama Militia, Company C, 1st Florida Infantry Reserves, Norwood's Home Guard, Greenwood Club Cavalry, A.R. Godwin's Cavalry, Union, 2nd Main Cavalry, 1st Florida U.S. Cavalry, 82nd U.S. Colored Infantry, 86th U.S. Colored Infantry, 7th Vermont Veteran Volunteers, Co. M of the 2nd Maine brought two 12-pounder howitzers on the expedition but these were not used. 